<sighs> You'd be so proud of me this morning. I set an alarm Why? and I got up early. Well, what time was the alarm? Six. That's good. Oh, wow. Isn't that good? That's really good. What's your alarm? Um, 5.30? 6? <sighs> 6, wow, actually, course. most days. What, and what time do you go to bed? I'm really trying. Nine. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stay up late. I really can't. You see, if I could get to bed at 9, 9.30 every night, oh, the mornings don't stand a chance against me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. You have to get a full, you have to get a, get full, a full eight, eight hours. Yeah. Otherwise, it's really hard to get up. Yeah. It still is hard. It still is hard. It's still hard. To get up in the morning. Mm-hmm. Don't, I don't want to trick anyone into thinking that it's easy. No. Steven's a trickster. Also, I love tricks. <laughs> I love tricks. Our favorite, our, our favorite, favorite yoga YouTube, instructor. No, our favorite YouTuber recently announced oh. that she's a morning person now. <laughs> she's a morning person now? Jealous. I've been, if you want to know, you can DM us. Yeah, if you want to know who it is, DM us. I have been setting an alarm for 7.30, which I feel very proud about because I'm yeah. I'm a night owl. Like, I stay up for fucking ever. Yeah. Well, when I wanted to transition, that's what I did. I started shifting it back like 15 minutes every week for like a month until I arrived at like a time that I wanted to get up at. That's fast. I would do that and then just go back on all of it on one weekend. <laughs> just That's wake, the problem. The weekends 11. are a real are a real mess for that. <laughs> they are. I feel like I could do 7.30 weekdays and I'll do 8.30 weekends until I feel good about it. Right? Okay. Okay. I mean, I was looking for permission. Me? I was looking for you. You're not to like, impress yes. me. No, I just like permission. Yeah. No, you can do that. It's thank you. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> I wanted you to say, mm-hmm. and then you'll have more time to get up in the morning and watch really long Jessica Chastain movies. The three five five. I did that this morning. Did you know, I that know. that's what I did? Yeah, that's I what I like to get up early and I usually watch the movies then because it's it yeah. sort of forces you to do it. You're still in like a vegetative state a little bit. So I, you're kind of like I was <laughs> I wasn't really ready for it. You don't have the ener- you don't have the energy to get up and like remove yourself from the film, so you're sort of trapped. So that's what I like about doing it in the morning. I was still in that in that in between sleep and waking and Yeah, you're like let me one eye you, open. Nothing like fresh morning murders to get you going. Oh my god. <laughs> it's funny that, that scared me. It's scared. Okay, yeah, we'll get to the violence, but what was really interesting to me about before I even turned the movie on, was the runtime? Oh my! Because it was so it, disheartening. It's, it's, it's so disheartening <laughs> to see that it's over two hours, and then what's even more shocking is that it's—I think it's only two minutes shy of the longest movie of all time, *The Eyes of Tammy Faye*. <laughs> <laughs> which I, which I, I told you I recently concluded after I started it a month ago. <laughs> I am not I was, one. I am not one to watch movies in installments. But I'm telling yeah, you, you, don't do that. I couldn't make it past. I couldn't watch two scenes in a row of that movie. <laughs> when one scene ended, I had to take a break for the day. You said bath time. <laughs> it was the longest movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Two minutes shy of the longest movie ever. <laughs> it I was so long. Went to theaters to see that. That's insane. Captive audience. You you paid seventeen dollars. <laughs> you better sit your ass down. Yeah, it's like are you are, you're not gonna get up because you paid. I paid and I paid but... for a soda. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> you really committed. I committed to the the bit of woman who watches biopics that cover life. Eyes of Tammy Faye is a weird movie because I I I, I didn't hate. We the should do scenes. that one next week. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> I can't I can't watch Faye. it again. <laughs> the every scene that I watched, I think I liked. It's just when the whole thing was put together, mm-hmm. I found it insufferable. I felt like we could skip some chapters. I was like, let's yes, skip ahead. Skip, skip out any. I love oh when a God. biopic covers a weekend. Yeah, like Spencer. That's why Spencer was so good because it was, so was quick. Yeah, I bet if it was two hours and it was just like a day and a really important day in Tammy Faye's life. I bet it would have been a much more interesting movie. I'd be down. But when you go from literally a child to death. Literally a child. <laughs> you know you're in for a journey. Yeah. And I agree with you. You pointed to one scene. That There's one really good scene. At the end. Broke it's me. really sad. It's so sad. <laughs> but other than that, nothing 
Now, what I will say is that one scene stood out for me that I remember from the eyes of Tammy Faye. Mm-hmm. When I finished the 355, I don't remember any of the scenes. I, there, It's just scrambled eggs in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember any of the moments. It's all up there. <laughs> It's up there somewhere, and I'm hoping that I'm it, hoping we find it when we, we need trigger it. some of those memories because I know I was watching it because I was actively confused. So I can only be confused if I'm paying attention. Yeah. So I know it's there somewhere. So I'm looking forward to unpacking. I'm looking forward to just grasping what happened it in when the movie. <laughs> this movie. In general, this, I was going to say this brand, this genre of movie yeah. is hard for me. Okay, what genre heist. are you talking about? Girl boss movies or spy <laughs> movies or violence movies? I have a real tough time with women in leadership roles. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was thinking though is that this is really, okay, out of all the, out of all the girl boss leaders that Jessica Chastain has played, I... This this one is definitely not my favorite. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I'm a total. I'm a, I'm zero a champion. Dark okay, I'm a Miss Sloan. I'm a, I'm a oh, Miss Sloaner. You, you know, Sloan. I love Miss Sloan. When she omitted it from her, that's not my name challenge. <laughs> and you were like, "What about Miss?" I was so yeah. I was like, "Wow, Jessica, if you're listening, Jessica, if you're listening, Miss Sloan is your greatest work. That's her holy grail." Now, I will say though that I I did find her 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 performance in this movie more enjoyable than eyes of Tammy Faye. And what I would say is that I would like to bring back my Oscar rule, which is that if you have two movies that come out in the year that you're nominated for an Oscar and she happens to win for eyes of Tammy Faye, I would like her to shift it to the three, five, five when she picks up the, the trophy. <laughs> and by the way, if Penelope Cruz wins, I would like her to shift it as well. You get to trans, you get to just you trans- to transfer, mutate. but you have to do it at the podium. You have to announce it. Imagine. You can't do it later. <laughs> it I would like her like to... a gift exchange, white elephant. And you just get up yeah, and you're I like, wanna... I will be trading this Oscar for this one. <laughs> but you know what's really funny is that when they give them the Oscars, they're blank, right? Because they don't know mm-hmm. who's going to win. And then at the gov- at the little after party, they take them to the little engraver. And there's always pictures of people like, uh, and they write their name and what it's for. <laughs> I wish that they I I would give Jessica Chastain I don't know how much money she would want from me but I'd give her a little bit to 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 tell the people when they're engraving it oh no 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 it's for the three five five it's shorter can you write the three five five yeah 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 in the eyes it's, of Tammy Faye Baker is like oh that's a long that's a lot yeah 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 it's what we called it on set so just the three five five yeah that was the working title <laughs> of eyes of Tammy Faye Baker. <laughs> Biopics are such Oscar bait, and I guess yeah. it's a way for actors to really stretch. Like, she played this woman from, what, 16 to 40, 50-something? To death, basically. Yeah, to death. So it's just, like, I guess it's a way to stretch. I don't know. Um, and then as yeah. much as I'll complain about a, a, a biopic that covers a life, when mm-hmm. I get the weekend one, I'm like, oh, but I wanted more. Like, I'll, I'll, right. I'll, I'll call myself out on that. Right. The Judy well, Garland this, one, same deal. I wanted more. Right. Well, the 355 is is a weekend movie, if you think about it. It sort of takes place over a long weekend. I don't think they go to sleep once. They so. don't. They don't. These and they, they reference that one, when one of the evenings when Diane Kruger brings the girls little cups of coffee. Yeah, and they're coffee like, ladies. Oh, I needed this. And they're like, oh, yes. I remember, but you're I, right. <laughs> you're right. There is no sleeping no in the sleeping. movie. These kinds of movies are so... They're so like strenuous for me as a yeah. viewer. You know what's interesting though when I was thinking about this is that you, the the push bet- behind the 355 when they were advertising it and they were talking about it was that... And this looked good, by the way. It looked like there was money. Money they didn't make back. So... <laughs> True. <laughs> right. Because when I saw Universal on the, t- on the production companies, I thought, wow. Wow. Now... Wow. Like when they were talking about the movie and getting ready to promote it, it felt like the argument was we don't, we we don't have lady spy movies. Mm-hmm. We don't we need them. Yeah, which especially I thought times that's five ladies. Times five ladies. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a little bit overlooking the greatest movie about a spy ever, starring a, a lady, which is Spy yes. with Melissa McCarthy and Rose Byrne. Two like, women. Probably the funniest movie I've ever seen in my entire life. One of the best ex- movie-going experiences of my life One of the date. best first-time movie experiences of my life. I will never forget 
in the plane, you look like a slutty dolphin trainer. <laughs> Lost yeah. it. Guys, if you haven't seen Spy, seen Spy. you really it's need to It's the funniest drop. movie ever. It's truly the funniest movie I've ever seen. Yeah, you need to drop and everything and go see it now. <laughs> and then when Rose Byrne was like, you remind me of a Bulgarian clown. <laughs> Rose Byrne is so underratedly funny, too. So funny. She's so funny. And I was just like, okay, well, we have that movie. And we and we'll get in. Stars? We'll get, well, I, I know what they were trying to do. It, it felt like they were trying to do some sort of, like, James Bond, Tom Cruise style movie. Mm, this was night but... and day for me. <laughs> I just, that's the only way I could get through it was thinking about that. Was night and day? Night and day. Yes. Right. It it also reminded me a bit of True Lies in the sense that it was mm. such a nonsensical plot. Like I didn't even know what we were looking for and why. So whenever it, the plot is a drive, I'm like, how many more years of mileage out of that plot do we get? Right. Before it, exactly. there's no physical drive anymore. <laughs> right. It's almost like you had to have an object. And that's what was so funny about it, is that it was just it was just an object that they were going after, which I know is in movies all the time. Yeah. But they, the Maltese even they Falcon. Didn't really, even they didn't really understand the technology. I when, was cry laughing at their description of this thing. When Lupita Nyong'o, the tech expert, tech takes a look expert. at it, she goes, wow, this is so beautiful. The, the code is so lovely. I was like, okay. Yeah, when they're looking at it on the screen, she goes, how could something so beautiful cause so much destruction? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Babe, it looks like Tell some us. skyscrapers. Look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> which felt, which didn't feel very boss, boss babe energy to me because I thought that they would have thought their audience could handle the truth. Tell yeah. us the tech. T- tell us the code. <laughs> tell us the code. Start from the beginning. They just take us through all the digits of the code. Zero one zero one 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 zero 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 one. I have no idea. Um, okay. Maybe I'll read the summary and then let's. Yeah, maybe that'll help because we'll I feel like, like a lot of people didn't see this movie. Well. You don't got to see it, guys. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> just listen to us. Yeah, you don't need this to see it. This one will be fun for us. We'll just make it really episodic for them. Yeah. We'll just be like Chastain and Sebastian Stan, house play a little. It's great. That was hot. That was so okay, hot. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay, go ahead. CIA agent Mason Mace Brown, played by Jessica Chastain, joins, joins forces with a rival German agent, the lovely Diane Kruger, a cutting-edge computer specialist and a Colombian psychologist when a top-secret weapon falls into the hands of a group of mercenaries. Together, the four women embark on a breakneck mission to save the world while staying one step ahead of a mysterious figure who's tracking their every move. And before we got on, we both couldn't figure out who the mystic- we didn't mysterious know who the figure, figure was. is. <laughs> we don't know. So um, We read that and we said we could look it up. But we're not going to. We could, but we're not going to. As and I don't even know what to figure. look for. I don't even know what to look for. Because there was a lot of mysterious figures. There's tons. There were a lot of mysterious figures. Now, okay, the title, here's here's the thing with the title. The title is The 355. Mm-hmm. And again, we, we were chatting before we started recording. And we're not going to spoil it now. You have to stay tuned. But they do reveal what The 355 means in the last two minutes of the movie. Bitter end, baby. <laughs> I was I was but, about to push pause on the whole thing, and they said it. <laughs> I did think to myself when the movie started, that's not a number I'm familiar with. No, no. You don't hear that number a lot. The four one one, the three it's, three five five. Right, and before I had started watching it, you had also texted me. This is a really serious movie. Yeah. <laughs> Which it is. It takes itself seriously. so seriously. And I think that's reflected in the choice of the number. 355 is a pretty serious number. I think there. Are, if you wanted to have a fun number, you could have gone in a different direction. Yeah. 355 looks legit. Yeah. Um, yeah, we won't the, spoil uh, it. I was going to spoil the, what it actually stands don't for. Don't spoil it. But I won't. Don't I spoil won't. it. I won't. I'll, let you, I'll let you reveal it when we get to it because it feels like pretty important to history, for women's history. It is important for women's history, and I just I just glanced at my screen and read a fact that's truly wild. But okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the also the other two numbers that appeared when I turned this on on Peacock mm-hmm. was twenty four and eighty six. Twenty four percent is the critics' approval on Rotten Tomatoes. Eighty six percent was the fan approval. The fan approval uh, that was staring me in the face the whole watch. <laughs> wasn't it? If you, wasn't it if you jiggle at your you? mouse just a little bit, those two numbers pop up. It always pops pop up. up. It yeah. always pops up, even when you're trying to pause. That's like a, a split in bowling. That's yeah, be farther apart. I thought, wow, that's a really big spread. You it's don't see spread. spreads like that. 
on. I kind of love when that happens. It means the movie's going to be a real mess or I'm going to love it. (laughs) Yeah. So when I saw that, I thought, okay, this, I'm probably going to really like this movie because I tend to be where the, where the audience is. Yeah. Um, Well, I'm more of a critic babe, but. I felt like the 60% spread was, was going to be in our favor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How'd you feel now? (laughs) Well, uh, here's the thing. The splat is 24. (laughs) <laughs> the plot is 24 here's the pr- here's my here's my thing it. and this is this is what it was the first scene and thank god you gave me a warning because the first scene has no ladies no no ladies anywhere i was furious furious i was furious okay, how you do you promise me movie. women a women where where are the where are the girls i was pissed and it's a long scene too long over it's like 25 25- it's like at least 15, 15, 20, 15. 15 minutes of fighting 150 miles south of, of, of Columbia uh-huh. or Cartagena. Men only and the whole time. Men only. Pissed. And I guess they're coming in to do what, what, what they think is a drug deal, but it ends up being an exchange of this. Drive. Drive. <laughs> With technology, I would like to read it because you're not going to watch this audience at home. I no, know you're not I don't think so. This. Um, a drive too with busy technology. watching Tammy Faye. Yeah, go go spend your time doing Tammy Faye, or yeah. Zero Dark Thirty, another yeah. long movie. Or Miss Sloan. Nope, not Miss Sloan. Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah, what? watch this. Or okay, Mo- Molly's Game. Love. Molly. I love Molly's I Game. I love Molly's Game. Molly's Game unfolds. That's like another classic girl boss. Beautiful. Okay, Chastain does do girl bosses, but okay, what was I saying? Oh, okay. The drive. Audience at home, you just all you need to know about this drive is it has yeah. technology. Right. In it, contained in it, that in the wrong hands could yeah. destroy the world and cause World War Three. So if that's, they do say that, they do say they that. say that verbatim. So <laughs> I, ser- this is a serious movie. We're not going to explain the technology to you because it's it, too complicated. You won't get too it. complicated for you. For you, not for us. Uh, we get it. We actually <laughs> we covered it before we got on. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> so to it's, coding it, in college. Yeah, this device is trading hands for mm. an unknown sum, and the Colombian army is outside trying to intercept it yeah. because they think it's a drug deal. But mm-hmm. fair, the people who the bad guys who are buying the drive from other bad guys decide they're not going to pay for it; they're just going to shoot them up, and they're going to take the drive for free. They're going to take what's theirs. But the problem is, is that there were I don't know nine hundred people in the house, all of them with <laughs> guns, so. And this was a big problem that I had with the movie was that there were these really big not enough guns, right? No, so many <laughs> guns. I hated the violence. I hate violence. And I don't like, have this... the stomach for it anymore. I, really I don't have don't. the stomach for it. And I like don't. you know this, I love Tom Cruise movies. I mm-hmm. love Mission Impossible. I love. And what I realized is that what is so enjoyable about those movies is that he gives people a little punch to the nose and a little yeah. and a little a elbow I love watching and him then run. run. I just want to see that man run. This movie was just like it was waves and waves of people being mowed down by With guns. With machine guns, yeah. It was <laughs> actually tough. really upsetting to watch. I didn't enjoy it at all. So I don't like guns anymore in movies. I don't like it. And you know what was confusing about this this scene was that everybody looked exactly the same. And what I mean by that mm-hmm. is that there was no distinguishing way when you're watching this mass chaos to know who was the drug dealer, or sorry, who was like the computer programmer side and who was the evil guy who's trying to buy it. Like you're watching no this terrible gunfight and I had no idea who was who. Me neither. I wait till those sequences are done. I don't like yeah. action sequences in general. I have to. I yeah. wait till they're done. I wait until the camera lingers on this drive. Right. In someone's hands. And I'm just like, I'll figure it out later. Right. And then after all of this violence, like 100 people dead, one of the kind of low-level army members walks into the house and picks it up. Picks it up. Yeah. And he's like, huh? Yeah. And I and needed, then the scene ends. Yeah. And I needed all the description afterwards to tell me what happened. It, like, this was very confusing because the next time that we see this gentleman – is in Paris, in Paris and he's dressed not in army fatigues and I had no idea who he was. Like a civilian. Because, like yeah. a civilian. Did you know who he was when he was sitting at the cafe? I was just like, we've seen him before. Okay. And I, I think he might be a bad guy. Not certain. 
I think yeah. they're relying on your shorthand with faces. They're like, ah, oh, he looks kind of bad. It's just like I Sebastian so. Stan, as right. beautifully hot and sexy as he is, it's like he's going to be a bad guy. You just know. You just know that something's going to turn there. I yeah, mean, he's too suave up. and too yeah. whatever. But but I needed okay. all the explanation afterwards, where then they get them in the room, and they're like, botched operation. We lost the th- drive. I'm like, okay, cool. Glad to know that. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, but Sebastian this was, and This Chastain. was just weird, though, because he finds the drive. He's an army person. It just seemed like the army would have told him to destroy it. But instead, he's going to go and sell it on the open market. So I guess what we're supposed to, I guess hmm, he's just like. That's what happened. Okay. <laughs> right? Like, he's going to sell it for money. I'm taking so, your word 100. Like, you okay. could tell me anything and I would 100% believe you. Okay. I don't know who was bad and who was good. I don't know who I was rooting for. I just felt like the person who ended up with the drive was some sort of bad guy. And Chastain and Sebastian Stan were CIA, right? Um, so they're, they're the good right. guys. Right. They started. Yeah. The next scene we see them, they're at CIA. It's the same HQ. It's the same headquarters where Sandra Bullock worked at because they're doing their mm-hmm. kickboxing during the work. And Miss Congeniality, same thing. Now, when I saw this kickboxing scene, I, I I thought to myself, okay, thank God. Like, I really don't want to watch any more guns. I'd rather watch people get mm-hmm. I want to see a legs fight. to the face mm-hmm. than guns. I but see unfortunately, a skull unfortunately, we don't really get too much physical like hand-to-hand combat it's still a lot of guns they give chastain a lot of really physical fights and oh my god don't revoke my lady boss card but (laughs) i i just kept wondering could a female really kick the shit out of this man i don't know i really don't know could the top trained female yeah take this huge guy i I, she did a good job she did a good job but i think you're raising an important point which is that she is skinny. 100 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> Thin. Thin. Thin girl. I thought I and saw Ch- Jesse Chastain this week. I told you, right? You, In yeah, Starbucks. You, I freaked yeah, out. You, ah! I was like, oh my God, it's Jessica Chastain. But she wasn't wearing a mask, and I just felt like Jessica Chastain would wear a mask. Probably. Right? Um, yeah, it was, it was strange. I mean, they're definitely communicating to us that – not only is Jessica Chastain a secret agent at the CIA, but she's probably the best. And mm-hmm. implied. What was implied? Now, what was strange is that, okay, they, like you've mentioned, there is this sexual tension on the mat between Jessica Chastain and S- Sebastian Stan. Yeah. Nick. And it's electric. But <sighs> Jessica yeah. keeps pushing him off and like. What was confusing to me is that are they are they a couple? I didn't understand their backstory. And it was just heavily it was just understand. hinted at, but they never settle it for us ever. Okay, that's what I was confused about because when they get to Paris, okay, so basically they say you have to go to Paris and intercept mm-hmm. this drive because the them, guy Yeah, go you're, ahead. you're forgetting they give them fun aliases, like they both get to play a real life couple. Yeah, real life couple. gives her a ring. This is where all okay. the, the implications of their, like, relationship came into play. I was like, were they together? Because um, it's weird. Because when they get their alias, she's like, oh, my God, let me guess. You decided we were going to be married. And he's like, guilty. Guilty. And he's like, let me put the ring on you. But ugly then, ring. Ugly ring. Ugh. But then as the movie goes on, she sort of implies that, like, she wishes she was married to him. She wants it. She wants it. She wants it. The camera like lingers on the bed beyond yeah. all of their like gear. And I'm like, what's about to happen? And she's like, come here. And she starts like yeah. unbuttoning her shirt. Right. And I love a cutaway from a sexy scene because I don't want to see God. that. We don't need to see it. We don't need to see it. Just we, don't need, we can use our imagination. Modesty is. Everything. Always in season. And here's what I did like. I will say this about modesty. I thought that except for Jessica Chastain. And Lupita Nyong'o, so I guess only two of the girls. They all looked great. I'm oh, not saying she... physically. I just think their their outfits. Oh. Uh, here, Lupita Nyong'o's first outfit was a shame. I can't believe they made her. It wear was that. like masculine. I kind of liked it. She was wearing the same outfit as her boyfriend, but tighter. Yeah. It was <laughs> kind of cool. Tie. Oh my god, the tie. The but, tie. Um, yeah, I was like, wow, she can really rock that. I would look. I would look like a boy. Yeah. I look like I a did. little boy wearing a tie. I did like. She looked like a back... woman in a tie. She... 
Yeah. I did like, because it comes back later, but somebody, I forget who it is. Oh, I think it's Diane Kruger who insults Jessica Love Chastain's her. Paris dress later on in the movie. But, Ethel. um, yeah. Her <laughs> yeah, alias but, is Ethel. <laughs> right. So her and Sebastian Stan are going to go intercept the sale. Or, no, no, no. Actually, all they're going to do is they are going, they've been authorized by the CIA to buy the drive from this guy. Okay. For, for $3 million. Mm-hmm. And they're like, wow, this is a steal. I can't believe he's going to sell it to us for $3 million. He Good has no deal. idea. Good deal. No way this can go wrong. No way this can go wrong. And they see him at the cafe, and they're real discreet about it because Jessica Chastain says loudly, there it is. And she goes, I'll go look inside. <laughs> <laughs> she literally said that. I love the, when she, she goes, goes that, inside. That looks like it. She goes inside, and she orders um, at like an American in Paris two yeah. chocolate croissants and two lattes or whatever. <laughs> She goes, oh, excuse oh, me. Excuse she goes, me. see vous play. And, and Diane the woman's like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, bitch. I okay, love Diane. This is Kruger. where we knew. We knew something was up because we yeah. knew she's in the movie and we knew she's not just a waitress. Yeah, because she was in all the promo. So. She was in all the promo. I'm already, I got to admit, by this point, it's minute 2020. Yeah. And I'm, I'm annoyed. I'm like, where are the four ladies from the I poster? Agree. But I, I, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. And when, I, when she walked into the cafe, and Diane Kruger was there, I felt, okay, let's go. Let's go. Like, let's do this. Fast forward, please. Fast forward. So, <sighs> um, but okay, so. They sit down at the thing and they're going to trade backpacks so that they can give him the cash, which they have uh-huh. for the drive. Yep. And as Diane Kruger is coming out to deliver them the cappuccino and chocolate croissants, she's like, uh uh uh. She does a little spill yeah. and knocks the hot, hot coffee on <laughs> Jessica Chastain's bare skin. <laughs> I would scream if there was hot coffee spilled on me. Could you? That's what I wish would have happened. It's like, ah! Sometimes I want just like a real reaction from actors. Like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> that's what... Okay, but that's the thing that I was... Not that I want them to say that word for word. I would never force anyone to say what I want them to say. But like that's where they could have that's where they could have added some really funny <laughs> moments. Because she spills Your face boiling on hot Jesus Christ, just got me. Don't you think that would have been funnier? Because they she if someone spills boiling hot coffee on you, your first reaction yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Like, your this first movie, reaction is not to humor. push your chair back and grab your merch. Like, she ooh. went shopping on the Champs Elysees. Yeah. No, oh my God. The, I mean, I think we said this before we went on. We just wish this movie was funnier. Funnier, 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 More funnier. Jokes, please. Be- right. Like, oh, this so would have been a really good opportunity because it's an intentional spill by Dan- Diane Kruger. Mm-hmm. That's fine. But you could have made it funny. Not the first in the intentional way- spill in this movie, by the way. We get it again later. Right. Chastain goes. Jessica Chastain does that. I'm going to go spill my drink on him. And I go, can't <laughs> wait to see this planned spill. And it was very good. She sold it. It was very good. It. it was better than I would have done. It was so. I would have anticipated it. We would have had to do it in 80 takes. She got. Yeah. I, I know she got <laughs> it on one. Okay. I know this is an audio, but. For Chanel, who can see me, like, this is how, they would have given me 80 takes in this, every time I would have done this. <laughs> <laughs> they would have, the director would have been like, cut, subtle, try it again. <laughs> For those just listening, Steven just keeps, he's just miming throwing water on someone. <laughs> <laughs> like, again, there would have been, okay. Okay, I'm happy you bring this up because what it's I I think spill. one of our goals for this was to find ways to make this a funnier movie. <laughs> is like when we get to that scene where Jessica Chastain has to do it, if she's like, F- like, oh my gosh, how do I get him to get distracted? And then Diane Kruger could have been like, you know what to do, and Jessica Chastain's like, oh my god, yeah, like I'm gonna th- I'm gonna spill on him like you did, and 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 Diane Kruger's like, yeah, uh, danke. And then, and then Jessica Chastain, and then instead of doing the subtle one, does what I did. Does the, and the, does guy's the like, Pratt fall are, version. Yeah. Does, the, does the Charlie Chaplin spill. Right. It <laughs> would have been funnier. It just drops. 
<laughs> like, I that's love how what... we both had the same thought. Like, I can't wait to see this fake spill. And it was very good. It was so good. It was she, very, very good. She just stumbles right into him. And it looked Stumbled. so natural. And it looked like she really did spill on him. Right. Oh, my God. Oh my, she's, you know what it is? She's too good of an actress. Too good. She sells she's it She's too, too good much. at being a girl boss, babe, that she knew how to do it perfectly. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, like we said, Diane Kruger spills so it rewind in back a to very the serious, <laughs> in a very serious way. And everyone takes it very seriously and bolts from the table. Yeah. And we get an amazing, well, I'm, I don't know how amazing because it's another, after we've just come off of like a 10 minute f- yeah. heist, fight, yeah. whatever, tons of guns, we get like another one. Yeah. Back to so, back. so what happens is Diane Kruger grabs one of the backpacks that she hopes is the one that has the drive. The drive but it, it, but spoiler alert, spoiler, she only grabs the one with the cash. Three hundred mil. Yeah. Is it three hundred? Um, you whatever it, it was, it was. Like it was three, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Three million was probably too low. Probably three hundred million. I don't. I don't remember. You. It honestly doesn't matter because doesn't matter. it should have been three hundred fifty-five million. That would have been. That would have been it. <laughs> anyway, so they. This scene, I did... Here's what I liked about this chase scene. First of all, I liked the chase only between Diane Kruger and Jessica Chastain. I'm not going to talk about the boys because that's silly. Boring. Two I men loved... chasing each other in the streets is pretty silly. So, so silly. Not, so silly. Not necessary. Not worth, not worth commentating on. Nope. I'm over it. I, um, loved, I loved it. The girl-on-girl fights in this were phenom. Oh, it was the best part of the movie. I so this it. was so good because here's the thing. Like, okay, Je- Jessica Chastain, obviously incredible actress. We know this. There's something about Diane Kruger, though, that is just, she fits this movie, or sorry, this role, like, fit her like a glove. I love her in this. She's phenomenal. It didn't feel like she was, for like, you didn't get the girl boss vibe from her that you got sometimes from Chastain's character. I just, she's a real working class, but, like, great female assassin. I, yeah, I just I just really bought it when she like when she vaulted onto a motorcycle and was driving it through the streets of Paris. It felt right as she was destroying. I was like, she does this? This is her actual job. That's how I felt. Okay, no acting. So they, no acting. They basically chase each other. They chase each other through a market, and as they're going through it, they're they are knocking things over left and right. They're shooting down chandeliers, mm-hmm. and this was just fun. But again, it could have been really good opportunities to add in some humor mm-hmm. with what they were destroying Give me some punchlines right like michael like, Ryan. remember the halloween movie when it's like it was like one two and then number three was a shot and the woman's head goes up <laughs> right like something like, like that like something where Di- where jessica justine gets a really stale baguette and puts it uh, like smacks her off the motorcycle with it like, something Ow, <laughs> bitch. something like that because what what then ended up happening is they ditch their motorcycles and they they take the chase down into underground. Keep in mind the whole time, Jessica Chastain is holding a pistol and just shooting at <laughs> Diane Kruger. <laughs> Joseph fires a hundred rounds in the air There's at a, this I woman. I wish someone kept track of ammo in this movie. It it's was a, a lot. lot. They they take the chase down into the subway and this this part did make me laugh, but I know it wasn't funny. I know they weren't intending it to be funny. Yeah. Did you notice? That they were shoving all those people out of the way, the way that they were grabbing people on the subway and just like pushing, pushing them, them, pushing them into I'm the like, ground. This is their commute. Stra- <laughs> Literally, like these weren't bad people. These were just people trying to get to work. Yeah. And they were shoving them left and right. And in a movie not super concerned about destruction, they're super concerned yeah. in that moment about destruction. Right. Oh, but and it was. I liked the underground scene. I, it it was. Felt, this was the. This was like good. This was the kind of action that I like to see. It felt like two even matched opponents. Yeah. Two women at the top of their game. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know who I want to win. I like them exactly. Both. I did write down cool. in my notebooks. It's cool, ladies. Let's find a way to work together. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to admit I was because you knew alert. it was coming. I was okay. I'm I'm this big old idiot who like forgot the trailer for a sec. Yeah, and was like, they're enemies. They can't work. Like I was like, mm-hmm. I just felt betrayed by the three five five because I went. I thought this was four women who worked together, and right. th- during that fight, I'm going, oh, so they kind of lied to us. Um, they're mm-hmm. going to be separate the whole movie. Yeah. Like they're going to be adversaries, but they're not. Well, you're right because it really takes about over an hour into the movie before the girls even decide that they're willing to work yeah. together. Yeah. It's I not right away. How we were going to get there. Yeah. But, um, 
Okay, so Diane Kruger manages to get on the subway and get away. Yeah. And she opens up. She opens up the backpack and it's money. It's money. And she's like, oh shit. And Chastain too was like, I lost the drive. So we've right. got another botched two operation. Fails. Two botched operations in the first. Yeah, and they hour. both had to go back to their respected headquarters. <laughs> yeah, tail between their legs. Yeah. And we get some backstory on Diane Kruger at that yeah. point. Her her father had betrayed her. I think her, yeah, her, well, not her, but her father had also been a spy yeah. and I think had sold secrets to to the Russians. And I think that she was the one who ended up having to turn him in to, mm-hmm. the, to the secret serve or to their spy agency. I loved that. A double she, cross. Okay, love the yep. double cross, but I love that her scenes, she was speaking in German. And I know that this was a, a movie made for an American audience, so when all the girls are together, they all are speaking English. But it, I wish there would have been a way that the ladies could have been speaking in German and Spanish and English and Mandarin, respectively, because it just yeah. sounded... It made it more interesting. And then when all the ladies were together speaking English, it just felt... It felt like we were just making Jessica Chastain more comfortable. And I was like, what are we doing here? This is a make white people more comfortable movie. Exactly. Because... I had that thought when Chastain uttered, I think, three words in Mandarin. Right. At one point. I wish I wrote down what it was, but I I was shocked. Yeah. And I went, oh, so she knew it that whole time. (laughs) Like, she knew Mandarin. Right. But, because, yeah. I, I just think it would have made it more interesting. But, um... The other women should have iced Chastain out and started speaking like Spanish together. Right. With, um, something. Penelope Cruz. And then Chastain would have been like, ladies, can we switch it back to English? And they would have been like, oh, okay, American. No. no. And no. But, um, and no. It was really funny because this did make me laugh. And I, I don't even know if it was that funny. But <laughs> um, when she's Your at the German. A warped, Stephen. When. Okay. When, when Diane Kruger is at the German spy agency. She's like very stubborn. She's like, this is my mission, my mission. mission." And the guy sends away, the guy sends away all the other agents. And he goes, listen, he goes, Marie, you're good at everything except taking orders. (laughs) And I thought, okay, that is a really funny personality to have when you were a waitress (laughs) 10 minutes ago. (laughs) In a French cafe. (laughs) If taking orders is your weakness. I spent way too much time wondering, was the French cafe made in... An alias? Yeah. Or did she actually moonlight as a French cafe waitress? I wasn't sure. It's weird because it, it seems it's like one she of those, was a plant. For sure. Uh, obviously, she was a plant, but it's it, it seems like it would just require a lot of coordination to get her a, mm-hmm. a day shift. To get her a day cafe. shift. Get, got to talk to the manager. The manager said, like, does she have experience? No. Yeah. But she's she a spy. Tra- right. Is there mandatory training? Yeah. Should I get another staff member on it in case she <laughs> needs to go and like run a quick heist? Yes. Yeah, it was. I was very was, concerned about the cafe. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I was a little it, concerned. <laughs> right for for spy movies, who, which notoriously make no sense, mm-hmm. the way that Diane Kruger ended up having a day shift there made no sense. Yeah. So I'd like to know. Right. So if you're if you're the one of the screenwriters, can you let me know? <laughs> So the guy basically says, listen, just go, go try again. But, you know. He's like, one more chance. One more chance, lady. And then we're getting the cross cuts or maybe one follows the other. I think it's cross cut because they sort of end on the same note. Okay. Yeah. Because Chastain is like, no, you got to give me a chance. You know, I got to go get the drive. It's out there. And he's like, no, I got to pull you off. Mm -hmm. And we find out that Nick died. Nick died. Didn't see that coming. This movie just surprised me. With the deaths. Didn't see that coming. Neither did she. Neither did she. So I go, oh my God, Nick didn't make it. And I started that. I started that. And then when she gets so upset and like emotional about it, I was like, you didn't even like him. But then I go, oh, I guess she did. I guess she did like him. (laughs) Because the ring and the the Yeah, she like, she looks at her fake wedding ring. Mm -hmm. Very strange. It's it's just not a wedding ring. It's just not an engagement ring. Right. It's a band. Right. Now, when she goes back to the, the, to the room... Well, we're forgetting the guy, this CIA guy tells her he waits right. till the room is done recording. Right. And he's like, um, I can't authorize you to finish this mission, but if you want to go out on your own and make it a little vendetta to yeah. avenge Nick's death, 
Right. Can't, I can't stop you. And I was like, that's a weird fucking thing for the CIA to say. <laughs> right. It's okay. Really this weird. is, okay. Obviously, this reminds me of like Mission Impossible because that is the entire plot of Mission Impossible is okay. that he does these missions yes. without government support. And if he gets, if he doesn't succeed, then the government is not going to save him. Like that is the plot of every Mission Impossible. Mm-hmm. So each time it's like he's he's really testing his luck. Right. Okay. Like every time they give him a mission, he can either accept it or not. But if he does accept it, the government is not going to save him and they are not going to defend him like wow. as one of, of one of his own. That is, of missions that is impossible. why there are Mission Impossibles. So <laughs> to me, this felt normal. <laughs> You're like, oh, this is a plot. <laughs> I was like, okay, I know this. I know this arena. I thought it was but, cool, but I just thought it was really odd of him to suggest it. But I will say that... I'm like, she should go decide. I, I, I will say that what was different about it is that I didn't really know... Well... She, he wasn't giving her anything to use to do it. So it felt like a fail. It felt like a, a setup to fail from the beginning because then in Mission Impossible, then they go and they get all the little giz- gizmos and gadgets that they're going to use to do all this stuff. Like she was, he was basically like, just leave here, do it on your own. Don't mm-hmm. tell anyone. Well, that was the big wink, nod, nod to camera where it was like, go do it so, on your own. And she was like, time to get together. The 355. <laughs> right. She didn't know it yet. She but implied she was... in her mind. Because then we get she Lupita. Goes, she goes to pick up Lupita in London, who is giving, I don't know, some sort of TED talk about technology mm-hmm. and how... Paper shredded te- that. Didn't know what yeah. it was about. <laughs> Big tech is bad. Yeah. I just went. She's wearing the aforementioned cardigan and tie. Yeah. Which... I thought she really rocked it. I Like I said, I would look like a little boy. So Yeah. <laughs> and I loved her name, Khadija, and they kept calling her Deej Loved. And she's talking about cyber war. And like you said, I totally paper shredded the scene because I i mean, she could have been talking about McDonald's. God knows what. <laughs> but it did, remi- it did remind me of one of my favorite episodes of Oprah, which was when she brought on, I might have mentioned it before, but it's when she brought on that expert because she wanted to figure out how the internet worked. And they, her and, her and Gail, like, went to, Oprah like, a computer. Oprah is so goofy. <laughs> It was so goofy. <laughs> and like on the set was like Oprah and Gail with their own computers, like <laughs> IMing each other by the end of the episode once they figure out how it's the like internet It's like your mom worked. with her transitions. Like, how do I do this? <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm like still at that stage of technology yeah, understanding. Okay. I'm so at AOL dial up. <laughs> when she was explaining whatever, I thought, okay, take your word for it. And Jessica Chastain is so rude. She texts her during the performance and says, mm-hmm. row 11 in the center. I know. And she so looks So distracting. Up. That would have thrown me off. I have a job thrown to do. Thrown me off. That'd be like but... my grandma waving in the audience. I have stuff to do. I have a script. But, bas- but basically through a, f- a variety of other interactions, she convinces Lupita that cyber war, well, she tells her, you got everything right in your presentation except one thing. It's now. Cyber war is not in the future. No, it's now. It's happening now. They can control. <laughs> she breaks into her house. <laughs> any, this is exactly what Chastain says. They can control any part of the world from their keyboard. <laughs> I was like, I think we already have this and I think we don't need a drive. Like, I think yeah, it's called. Yeah, we have it. We have it. It's literally propaganda. <laughs> yeah, we, we <laughs> And have it is this. happening now. Happening now. So you're right. I just wrote, That's... love a hacking scene. Click. I love all the click, click, clacks. Lupita's like, and the, yeah. we're looking at the screen. And at that, at that point in my notes, I wrote, so this is a Vendetta movie. <laughs> so confused. Maybe. Maybe. Unclear. Yeah, I think you're right in the sense that Jessica Chastain's motivations for getting this drive back are inter, inter, or intertwined with her desire to avenge yeah. the killers of her what appeared to be toxic colleague, but now appears to be her dead ex-husband. I'll, I'll go with that. Dead husband. Dead ex-boyfriend, at least. At least. At but least. Lover. Dead ex-lover. Lupita agrees because when she realizes that the bad tech is here, she decides she's going to join in mm-hmm. with, with Jessica. She just can't resist. These ladies' wives just can't. can't resist. And her boyfriend is like, 
I thought you were done. And she's like, I'll be home for dinner tomorrow. And we know she I knew she wasn't going to. I knew she wasn't going to be home. I also knew she wasn't going to be home for dinner. (laughs) I knew it. I knew it. I had a, you know, I had a feeling. Yeah. And I was right. And I was right. And she gives him one last kiss. Kiss. And it really is the last last kiss. kiss. Oh my God, it's so awful. I can't believe they. I'm going to cry. I cannot believe they killed him. I cannot believe they did that. I don't know who I was referring to at this moment, but I just wrote, I not so secretly love that all the men just keep dying. Is that bad? Because at this point in the movie, another guy dies. All the men die. Uh, All All the men men die. Yeah. So they go go to some sort of dock area. Oh, they're still in Paris, right? Because they said he's still in his, he's still in France. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The guy. Right. And he's with Penelope Cruz, right? Oh, right, right, right. We missed Penelope that that happened well she yeah she comes in so the guy who was trying to sell it who we guess at this point we have to confirm was like the army guy who picked it up Mm -hmm. is in a hotel room and penelope cruz knocks on the door and he lets her in and we find out that she's a therapist didn't know they had those i still didn't know why she was there i'll be honest i'm like why are you there okay when she comes in she goes i'm not here for a therapy session i go you tell him but then I was like, oh. I thought it was she... a you tell him too, but she's <laughs> actually a therapist. She's actually. She's actually a therapist. <laughs> she's actually a therapist. So much and... so that when, like, later on, I when they said she's a therapist, I was like, no, she's not. She's a no, spy. She... I was like, you're being rude. Like, she just told us. Like, was that like, was a girl she... boss moment. I was she like, was she's telling not us. a therapist. That's just like a funny, sarcastic quip. No, not she's... here for therapy. <laughs> yeah, she's a therapist, though. But so I just she's... wrote, okay, it's phenomenal yeah. to see Penelope. She looked really good. She looked really good in this scene, thank God, because we'll see it later, but they put her in some pretty unfortunate wigs going forward. But in oh, this I scene... Oh, I like the wigs. Her hair looked amazing. Oh, my God, Chanel. The wig at the gala was Oh, no, horrible. no, I didn't like the gala one. The color was off. But it was terrible. the long-haired one probably yeah. was probably her real hair with extensions. She looked yeah. great. She looked, she looked really wonderful here. And she is acting in a different movie. Like, she is... I thought she was turning in a really good performance. Yeah, I loved Penelope Cruz. Like she, she was, was the really rated one for me. Really underrated. But yeah. she I guess so her role is that she's supposed to use her therapy skills for good or for bad and convince this guy to give her the drive so she can take it back to the government. And even though that means that this guy's going to have to go to jail and she's like, "Listen, come with me. We'll get the drive. We'll go back." She's like, "Otherwise you're going to die here." And you should at least be alive in federal prison for the rest of your life. And mm-hmm. he's like, okay. Okay, fine. So they go fine. to pick it up. Fine. 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 So they go to pick it up at a locker, which is in some sort of meat packaging, fish warehouse market. market. I love an open air market scene in these kinds of movies. Yeah. And We've already had so one Penelope, in Paris, so. yeah. So Penelope and the guy are walking through the market to get, to their transport and at the same time Lupita and Jessica Chastain on one hand are tracking him and Diane Kruger also this is a really wiggy movie but Diane Kruger is wearing a dark haired wig mm-hmm. it looked awful I prefer her as a blonde oh my way. god it was just so bad and she's also tracking him mm-hmm. and then this was confusing because again no one was wearing distinguishing clothing but what I think happened is that one of the Colombian people turned on them because he like their guard all of a sudden turns around and shoots him yeah i there was too much double crossing in this movie i really need a clean and clear enemy good guy right and it was like everyone was bad yeah (laughs) because what i think was except the women because like yeah so like the guard who is there to protect them turns around shoots the guy kills him Mm -hmm. and then he, Probably leading me to write, I'm so psyched that the men keep dying. If, if there's one thing that will happen in every scene, men will die. A man that will is die. what's going to happen. <laughs> so that all, all hell breaks loose. The girls spring into action and they all go running for the drive. But before they do that, Jessica Chastain throws <laughs> Diane Kruger, this is the best scene in the movie, into the freezer and they have a freezer fight. <laughs> And this was my favorite scene in the movie. More girl-on-girl so girl fights. I loved them all. They were great. Better than was... the man-on-woman fights. So much better. So much better. <laughs> and I just loved it. 
they are really beating each other up. Mm-hmm. It's nice. It reminds it's me of growing <laughs> up with siblings. I was like, yep, that's yeah. what we did. Yeah, it felt like a real like playroom romp. Yeah. Like a, yep. ow, ow, ow. ow. <laughs> I feel like one more hair pull and I would have been like having a sensory experience. <laughs> yeah, it was very funny because it was a really long scene. I will so say that long. it was a really the long, keep just like scene. racking up that runtime for me. <laughs> yeah, and then eventually they hear Penelope Cruz like scream from the other room, like "Help me, help me!" Yeah, in Spanish, and that though. causes the girls to say, "Let's stop." And mm-hmm. Diane Kruger gives Jessica Chastain one last shove across the room, and then she runs out, and Jessica Chastain runs after her. Mm-hmm. And they find out that the drive has been taken again, again God by another it. person who looks vaguely familiar to all the other people. Mm-hmm. And they go chasing after him. And yeah. then this was a great scene because they they eventually get to the docks, <laughs> and Jessica Ch- Lupita Nyong'o is like slinking through the crowd. Jessica Chastain is using using like little spy techniques, and then all of a sudden, Diane Kruger drives through a bunch of people on a forklift (laughs) she's just like racing towards him again so much room for comedy here like a forklift remember she was on a forklift yeah i mean i didn't i wish i took more notes because i kind of i paper shredded that and i just skipped right ahead to when they try to get when they get on each other's team because that's what i was interested in i just don't i don't want to see women fighting i want to see them on the same team right so the guy the new thief who we don't have no idea who it is has the drive gets away don't know if he's bad i'm assuming bad and then all the girls go back for an unplanned meetup at one of the rooms Mm -hmm. and they drop their guns and they decide they're going to work together yeah if you girls keep botching each other's ops says deej (laughs) And they're like, oh, my God, you're right. I can lay down my sword. We both do want the same thing, the drive. Yeah. And we want the same thing. I'm a big old idiot, like I said. I'll just reiterate. Completely paper shredded the trailer. Forgot that they're going to work together. And then I went, oh, good idea. Good idea, girls. <laughs> good idea, ladies. I would do the same thing. And I love so this I really scene because I really Penelope, Cruz, Penelope Cruz, the therapist who doesn't do any good therapy here, she's sort of like, okay, thanks. Been fun. Time to go. Have a great time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Send me postcards. And they're like, no, you're, you're staying. Now. You're in it to win it. You have to stay with us. I was shocked that she was there the whole time. I'm like, why is she a part of all these operations? I'd be like me why trying to participate. Part- right. I'm useless. It, right. And, you know, I in a movie like this, you expect all the girls to bring some sort of skill to the table. Lupina has the tech skills. Mm-hmm. Jessica Chastain, I guess she's He's American. That's she's... her skill. <laughs> Damn, I wish uh, I didn't talk over your punchline. Uh, <laughs> Jessica Chastain Diane is Kruger. American. <laughs> she doesn't really, she's like not really bringing that much. Diane Kruger is clearly like the fighter. Yeah. And Chastain is box office appeal. Right, right. Kruger's she's br- she's got putting the skills. butts in seats. Butts in seats. Butts and in seats. Ostensibly, D- Penelope Cruz's skills should be therapy or mediation but she seems to lack yeah people skills and and those therapy skills i think throughout the movie points to the fact that what you said earlier she's definitely turning in one of the better performances because i think she maintains that fish out of waterness instead of being like okay now i'm a spy yes thank god and she's the only one who is she's our way in i guess is Mm -hmm. that we're we are penelope cruz sort of looking at this with eyes wide open because yeah she's the audience's because one thing that they mention when she's meeting with the army guy in a few scenes before is he's like wait a second you work for the spy service in columbia but you've never been in the field ever and she's like no i'm a therapist <laughs> and that's the moment in the movie where i found out she was actually not actually a therapist and right. actually a therapist right right then, so right she there. So she, her, her comedic appeal, I guess, if there is any, is that she has no skills. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and so they find out that they have to go to Morocco. Very night and day of us, just. Morocco. Well, that's how the movie goes. It's very night and day. All of a sudden, movies... all of a sudden, we get Morocco, two thirty p.m. Yeah. And yep. I loved. 
Oh my god, Jessica Chastain's outfit in this scene was a true LOL. <laughs> she was wearing like her Carmen San Diego fedora, all white, like business suit. I, know. I was dying at her outfit. I couldn't with her eye makeup a lot of the time. I'm like, she put on a full purple smoky eye. <laughs> yes, she as loved. A spy. She loved a statement eye. A, an, a statement eye. And I was shocked. And so was, did Lupita also had a statement eye most of the movie. Yeah, but she was she was usually behind a computer. So she was not in it the made field. More sense. Jessica Chastain was a true she loved to stand out in the crowd. <laughs> and She's which like, was I'm really funny. I sacrifice my looks just cuz I'm a spy. This was really funny to me because they are in Morocco. They're chasing this guy throughout the different marketplaces and the bathhouse and all that kind of stuff. And then they finally locate him in the middle of the market, Mm -hmm. standing there. And they're like, oh, my God, if only we could walk up to him and take it. And Jessica Chastain goes, we're too exposed. We're too exposed looking like this. And Penelope Cruz just goes, why are you dressed like that? Like, (laughs) why don't you just change your outfit? And they do. They change their outfits and then they're good. good it was go. like the funniest thing in the world because they were like, "We the mission's over. I can't wear my white flannel suit out to get this drive. I'm trying to get a visual of it on the IMDb. Is this the point where Lupita's like, I have to go into that bathhouse? And she right. wraps she, herself in a headscarf? Right. Bef- yeah. Before, well, before that is that scene, right? Because yeah. Lupita IDs the guy and then mm-hmm. they finally find him in the crowd. And that's when Jessica Chastain and Diane Kruger are dressed normally in their normal getups. And then Penelope Cruz is like, well, you could just change your clothes and then you could fit in. <laughs> I just found the fedora on the IMDb. <laughs> it's tr- she's, so... She's doing like, oh, like planta- like, like it's archaeologist terrible. in the 30s over, Ex- overseeing the Egyptian finds. It's Carmen San Diego goes to the south. <laughs> like that is her outfit. Oh my in god, this. Diane Kruger in the brown wig. Scary. Scary, so scary, scary. Fuck. I'm scared. But good news, good news. The girls walk up to him and they get the drive. Uh-huh. They get it. <laughs> Movies this is the end of the movie. This is the end. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, we have an hour. We have another hour. Because I went to bed last night kind of around this point. I was like, another fucking hour? Are you fucking when, serious? When this scene happened, I thought, okay, you know, kind of anticlimactic, but you know what? I'm good. I'm good for the movie to end. And then I paused it, and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Because one of the last things I wrote last night was harem of women in headscarves, which somebody Literally. says in this movie. That's He says, I can't believe you got like got, got by got, a harem of women. Got got by a harem of women in headscarves. And then they also say to Jessica Chastain, I wish we would have put you in a cage when I had the chance. When I had the chance. <laughs> What's like, I'm like <laughs> violence against women. Uh, so they get up. the drive. They get the drive. They go back to their lady headquarters mm-hmm. and they are like, they bring in uh, Jessica Chastain's boss. He's only an hour away and he is going to um, take the drive back to where it needs to go. And the girls go out for some drinks, and they tell funny stories. They get to know each other. Was, okay. They loosen up. I have questions about the stories. Sure. Was it their first kill or their first dead body that they saw? What are they telling? I don't know. It was either like their first day in the field or their first kill, because then Jessica Chastain tells this hilarious, so, so funny, funny I fell so off my chair, <laughs> where she killed a cow as her first kill. Yeah, which she by say? accident. I ran 35 miles an hour into a cow. <laughs> so funny. I guess you could say that was my first kill. And the girls erupt. They erupt. They erupt in laughter. And then they it's... go to Diane Kruger. We showed you ours. Yeah, tell which us. Which I thought was sexy. <laughs> a little, it was like a little sexy. And then <laughs> Diane Kruger is like, she takes the air right out of the balloon. Yeah. <laughs> she She's... Does. She's no fun. No fun at all. You could, I think she could have skipped ahead and told a funnier one. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, I was 15. Okay. Again, like, again, she could have told this story, right? And yeah. then and then one of the other girls could have been like, okay, give it a, one more chance. <laughs> like, <laughs> she tells a really like, serious story. We pan yeah. around the room. Everyone is blank faced and in shock. And then yeah. somebody breaks with that good, good comedic timing and goes, 
got another? Yeah. <laughs> how, how about something okay, we're, lighter? We're warmed up. <laughs> What's next? Now that it we're was... warmed up, skip ahead a few years. How about you're not 15? Yeah, but they, um, they wrap up their drinks and they eventually go back to the the lady bunker house and they find out that the guy who was there was killed and we see in a little aside scene that a mysterious woman comes in and she says i'm not here to for you mm, that's probably the mysterious figure that we were so confused about or i was so confused right. about but when when you when there's a mysterious figure tracking people in a movie you like to you see have a mysterious to, figure you have to see a mysterious figure I not just a one off so she says something ominous like i'm not here for you and or I'm not here to kill you, but she but she does. And then she I guess takes the drive and leaves. And when the girls get back, they find another man dead. And then I wondered to myself, maybe that's the number maybe three five five is the number of men who are gonna die in this movie. I was still because waiting for the title to make still, sense. We still didn't know what it meant. Do you and, know what I think I was the problem? I was like, okay, in the beginning, what? Chastain must have said time to get the three five five together and I missed it. Like that's I what agree. I thought. I believe myself. Yeah, I thought that I must have missed it because mm-hmm. it's way too long in the movie to have no idea what we're talking about. So they see the dead body and then they quickly realize that they are going to be blamed for the death because the CIA is showing up and is investigating them. And they're like, this is when that guy says to Jessica Chastain, I should have put you in a cage when I had, when a, I had chance. a chance. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Oh my god scrambled eggs in my brain but still great and they're like they're like huh and then they put it together that they're going to be blamed for it mm-hmm. and and um but before this scene again was a perfect opportunity for some light humor because before the the men break in light. to the room all the all the girls are gunned up pointing towards the door and there's penelope cruz just walking around by the door <laughs> and they're like they're like man get out of the way get out of the way now and <laughs> it would have been really funny if she was just like oh i heard someone outside the door i was gonna open it <laughs> and they were like they were like no. she could have been really good comedic relief oh my for god sure. it's but, okay it's all right this is the movie we got yeah so they there's a shootout again more men die and Somehow the girls, um, the girls get away. I honestly forget how they get away. I'm 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 struggling right now because the next thing I know is the gala. Where they That's the next up. thing I know. It's yeah. I remember that they eventually got out in the back and they got into a car, and then I think what they find out is that there's going to be an auction. In oh yeah, somehow mm-hmm. they get the intelligence that this this device the the whatever it's called the drive is going to be auctioned off at mm-hmm. this gala in that was it china so they go to shanghai and this is the first if you remember the first coffee break of the movie <laughs> very very multiple days in at this multiple point, days in they get a little they get a little coffee maybe they were sleeping on the planes because we never got a plane scene of them flying yeah we, to the you're right house. we didn't see them getting from uh, France, or sorry, Morocco to China, which would have been a long flight. How they uh-huh. got there, I have no clue. They probably but... slept on that plane, is what I'm thinking. Okay, but I don't know. That how makes they... more sense. Were they buying coach tickets? Because the CIA is not bankrolling. Well, that's what I was saying. How are they getting there? I wonder. So, so this they is get multiple there. days of a movie. Yeah, they get there. They get to Shanghai and they start to plan for the party, and they they dress uh, up. They dress up. They hack their way onto the guest list. Yep. And Blue Pete is like, "I got you. You're on. I got you, girls." This is where Penelope is wearing the very unfortunate wig. I felt so bad for her. This one and wasn't cute. I did okay. like. I did like that they were at least playing around with the looks. I mean, Jessica mm-hmm. Chastain was wearing bangs in this movie. In this so scene, so many bangs for her. It was weird because keep the bangs I, off I, I, screen. I, what I appreciated at least is that they were trying to give us some looks. Like, I think that's really what they thought they were doing. Yeah, it's but that it kind really, of movie. But it really, it didn't land as I was hoping. But the girls get to the party and they're going to try to find out where women. the... Not girls. Sorry, the, the women <laughs> get to the party. The women. Don't be disrespectful. 
<laughs> the women, the the women go to the party. Mm-hmm. They're dressed like women and they go to the party mm-hmm. and then they are going to look for the drive. They're going to look for it anywhere they can find it. And Pen- this Penelope? is where, go is ahead. That, is that where you're going with Penelope Cruz? He's going to use her therapy skills. <laughs> She's going to use her therapy skills after she has to re- be reminded that she has to talk like a human being. And she starts to flirt with some guy and she gets better and better with it every line. And this was also the scene that we mentioned before where Jessica Chastain spills her champagne on a guy to yeah, at the gala, yep. at get the something. I forget what she was doing with him. She wanted that like paper pamphlet thing that he was holding. And oh. it literally it was like a PDF printed doc of like yeah. the items. And she goes to the bathroom and she sprinkles some stuff on it to get his fingerprints. And she goes, he never made it past page three. <laughs> I was oh, like, right. What? I didn't really understand what that I meant. was like in a movie about high tech and big tech, you have a printed out PDF to mm-hmm. give you a clue as to what item this man was about to bid on. Oh, right, because what they're saying is that the yeah. drive is not up for bid, so it must be hidden in, in, one, in one of the objects. Yes. And then they deduce that to mean that it's in the vase, because I guess that's the last item there that well, he's flipped to. Penelope Cruz is like asking him, she's like, what do you... She gets to the dude, and she's using her flirting and therapy skills, both. Her skills is a, a woman. <laughs> she's therapizing him. Yeah. She's theranosing him. And I couldn't wait to see how she was going to get this information, and I couldn't wait for me to be, like, kind of surprised and excited. Yeah. But very standard, what kind of man are you? Are you this? Are you an elephant? Are you this? And then She's like, just, do you like mirrors? <laughs> like, he gives, like, very vague answers, and then she goes, it's in the vase. She just yeah. like, and I'm like, how do we know that? I had no idea how we got to the vase. I, 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 I just, I don't know. I think I was missing something, but we, we figure out that it's going to be in a vase. I was like, surely I'm as smart as Penelope Cruz. I'm going to get this before she does. And she goes, it's in the vase. And I was like, yeah. damn it. I missed it. Right. So, okay. So we figure out it's in the vase, but at the same time, Jessica Chastain runs into once was dead, now is alive, Sebastian Stan. And he a pulls ghost. her into... The ghost of Sebastian Stan, magical realism. Viewers at home, he's not a ghost. He's actually Sebastian Stan. He's not a ghost. Stan. He's real. He's yeah. the real Sebastian Stan. Because we know we joke a lot in, in these pods about ghosts and how nice it would be if certain characters were ghosts, but he's real. Oh my God. This movie needed a ghost. This movie it needed, needed a, two ghosts. <laughs> yeah, it needed so many ghosts. Diane Kruger's oh, dad. Oh my God. All the men that die become ghosts and they haunt them <gasps> for the rest of their lives. I like that. But you know how <laughs> Chastain and Kruger had both been double crossed? Well, mm-hmm. spoiler. Um, oh. <laughs> Kruger's dad and Sebastian <gasps> Stan should have been ghosts. Should have been ghosts. Magical realism. <laughs> oh my God, that would have been so good. But then... Okay, so she, back from the dead. Back from the dead. He's alive. Sebastian Stan brings her into a, like a scary looking room where there are guards. And this was a strange energy to the scene because like, like you were saying before, at this point, if you're paying attention, he's... He's giving off bad energy. He is giving off really strange energy. Mm-hmm. Baddie. And Total Jessica baddie. Chastain, I think what she was doing or what she was like acting, if we will, is I feel like she was acting interested to try to get information. Right? Mm-hmm. Or was she actually like, I think it was a blurb of between being excited to see him and feeling those feelings all over again Mm -hmm. while at the same time realizing that something is afoot, right? Or or do you think she knew that something was off the whole time? I mean, okay, Chastain's a classically trained actress. That's how we like our stars. Um, I (laughs) think she comes from Juilliard. So I can't accuse her of being unspecific. I think it's a choice. Yeah. And I think she had very complicated feelings about him because – yeah, you're right. It was money. I'm like, does she love him? Is she relieved and just so psyched and can't wait to get back in the bed with him? Or right. is she like, Because oh on the one God. hand, it's really dumb to go into a room like that. Yeah. Well, I don't think she knows that he's double-crossed her yet. She's kind of confused. She's like, what are yeah. you doing here? And at that point in my notes, I wrote, okay, vendetta over. He's alive. You can leave Yeah, now. because she does seem happy on some regards. But then I yeah. think as he continues to talk to her... And then by the end, it's solidified that something is rotten in the city of Denmark because yeah, he says just, to the guard, lock her up, put her in that cage I told you about. Yeah. Well, he's and, like, join me on my side. And she's like, oh, my God. I think that's the point in time where she's like, okay, he's double-crossed me. 
he yeah. led me to believe he's one person, he's someone else. But I'm still confused at this point because she's rogue. She's not working for the CIA. But he is still working for the CIA, but he's bad? Okay, that this was is confusing. Where, <laughs> this is where it's confusing because we'd have to spoil another spoiler to explain that. They're yes, not. technically he is still working for the CIA. Mm-hmm. But, but if you remember his boss, the guy who's already dead, bad we egg. find out also was still working for the CIA, but was working for the bad guy. So it was like a double, double cross. Yeah. So he didn't, and the, he's still the working for the still CIA. And gets out scot-free because they were just two right. bad eggs. That's it. Right. Her boss okay. and okay. Sebastian Stan had been compromised, but as part of that, they stayed working for the CIA. So Got you're it. right. Got it's it. confusing. Too many, too many crosses. Because then he goes back and crosses her. No. <laughs> so he locks her in the room. He tells the guard, listen, she, boy, is she pretty, but she packs a punch. And we get to see it. And we get to see it. And but by the way, he gives her a run for her money. Yeah. It's not an easy, it's not an if easy. If this were the Super Bowl, I would say good game. Yeah. I thought, I thought, <laughs> I would say that too. I would say to both of them, good job. Both like, were landing you guys, punches. Both were scoring. You guys both did a really good job. She wins, and she kind of smashes his face into the door as she walks out. But oh, yeah. Um, it, like, multiple... I love <laughs> ow, those in ow, scenes, ow. but it's really scary when she's got his head on the floor and she's just slamming him in the door. But yeah. it's all cross-cutting between her beating the shit out of him in a room and the bidding, right? For and the, the bidding. For the vase or the vase, depending on how you pronounce it. Yeah. I'll go with vase, but... I grew up with vase, but then I became an adult and, like, went for vase, so... <laughs> Okay, so right, they're Irrelevant. bidding for the they're bidding for the vase, and Sebastian Stan walks in. The this women part, are no match for his bids. Okay, but I really had no idea what they were saying about the money here because it looked like he was doing money, or sorry, he was doing technology like tinkering to get money. Like it felt like he. I don't know why they kept showing that. I didn't know why they kept showing it either because they were talking about it enough, and I understood what was ha- well. They just he just kept raising the bid to like very high right. points. I think they were showing him doing the computer stuff because it Lupita was tracking online oh, from another room. Right. Um, and she was the one reporting, he's going higher. He's okay, he just oh. bid half a billion. And okay, she's feeding it. it into their earpieces. But he's in oh, the right. room also. That's what I was it. saying. It was conf- right. That's why I was confused. Because I thought what they were showing us with the technology is that he was somehow like hacking into like send fake money but i now i'm like i think that was beyond the scope of it but i think you're right they're just trying to show us that the money is also like digital and lupita was able to track it she's able to track almost like a second before he calls it in the room she's able to see he's going up to half a billion and we're gonna lose it because what i would think would be the only benefit of bank paying for a, a vase like that with like cryptocurrency would be that you wouldn't want anyone to know who the buyer was because as we find out from the new lady who joins the Chinese agent, she says that the only reason she was there was to find out who the bad guys were who could potentially be buying this drive. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if you're going to buy it using crypto, just do it from outside the room. (laughs) It felt very... Hire us to rewrite this movie. Right? It felt odd. I so, think Lupita's... Like, the, the crypto or the online bidding was also so Lupita could say, we're losing it. This yeah. is going... This is faster than humans can... This is too fast. And she's feeding in Penelope Cruz's ear, I need you to get closer so I can track the drive. Because we're going to oh, lose it. Oh, that's why she had to get close. She's, she's basically saying, we're going to lose the drive. Like, that's going to yeah. happen. They're going to buy it for half a billion. We don't have half a billion. You know, we're like... Okay, so, okay, answer, riddle me this. So she goes this. to the front. Her her significant other is in the front. Luckily, there's a seat open. She sits down. She flirts. Yeah, and not, Lupi- still not close and enough. And Lupita says to her, you're not close enough. You're not close enough. So she tosses her purse close to the vase. Yeah, she's like, want to get out of here? They get up. She tosses her purse close to the vase so Lupita Uh can ping the drive and get a track on it. Got it. Okay. I don't know what was in the purse. Maybe like a cell phone or something. Okay. That's what I was super confused about because when she gets up, I was like, and she throws her purse. I'm like, oh my God, she's going to explode the vase and whatever. But she just tosses her purse Mm -hmm. and then she walks away. Yes. Okay. I was very confused, but now that makes more sense. Yeah. So they knew they were going to lose it. They knew they had no shot of getting it, but Lupita's like, at least I can track it. So get your purse up there. 
and I thought that was wanna, clever. I was like, want to hide up in the rafters and just shoot the vase up? What happened to those old fashioned spy movies where you get a grappling hook and you just launch yourself into the, a ceiling tile and wait? Did you ever watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? <laughs> Not enough episodes, no. Okay, because there's a there's a really good episode where they where they think that one of their neighbors has stolen a vase from a museum <laughs> and they are keeping it in their house. So they break into their house and they hide in there all day and then they and then they the neighbors come home and at the very end of the day, like the whole episode is them like running from closet to closet to try to find the vase. And then on their way out, they find the vase and Danny DeVito is holding a whip and he goes, the vase, and he smacks his whip and it ends up shattering, shattering. They, shattering it. And then they look at them, they look at each other they're like, oh, that wasn't it. And they walk out <laughs> and it was like, it's good payoff. It was so funny, but it just reminded me of that where I'm just like, just, just destroy it. And then shoot up the drive, and it's done. There were multiple points in this movie where I said, "Shoot the drive." Right, it's on like, the floor. I guess there. I guess you want to get it for like research purposes, but if the consequence is that it could fall into the wrong hands and someone could do terrible, terrible things, let's just destroy. Just destroy it. it. This is Harry but Potter and go. the Elder Wand. Nobody should right. have that power. Is what I'm they saying. Let, okay, so they let them go. I wrote again: the wig on Penelope Cruz is a sin. Yeah. More men die. And More men they, die. the the mysterious figure, I guess, is who this woman is. the The Chinese agent gets the girls to a um, really cool safe house. To a really cool safe house, she it. saves them from being shot up. And yeah, Lin Me, she's super cool. Safe she's house looks super cool, industrial, and a little cold. That, but great. Oh, it was so. I, I will say this about the movie. I did. It, it felt. It felt big. Like, it felt like a big movie. Mm. And I like that. Like, yeah. I like that it... I like my movies in, big. In the age of, like, Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime movies, which I get it, like, it's it's how they're producing these movies, oftentimes those movies to me always feel so small and so not, like, a big movie. This yeah. felt like a big movie. Pay up. And like, show me the checkbook was out. Right. And they were cutting checks and no one was looking. Oh, they were cutting the checks because this was really cool. They go to the safe house and um, they start to like recollect and figure out what they're going to do. And um, Chastain is recovering, which I felt like was another really nice real nod, like a real touch. Yeah. I, I would have been like, ow, I'm so bruised. And she was. She was acting. These ladies are bruised. bruised. Chastain was... <laughs> they're- they are really bruised, but they're there. And this was like the saddest scene in the movie. It was like mm-hmm. almost, it was like almost uncomfortable to watch. But these guys come in and they um, have guns. I forget. And then they they threaten them. Their safe house <laughs> is like infiltrated again. I feel like <laughs> so sorry for them and so sad because at this point, I'm I'm trying to rest. I'm trying to rest as they're trying to rest. As they're but trying to rest. We know that, so at cross cuts or one before the other, who knows, scrambled eggs in the brain. Sebastian yeah. Stan bid oh, right. half a billion dollars on a fake drive. Yeah. Um, Lynn Me was like, it's a fake. So I was like, yes. At oh, the safe right. house, she opens it, she, a safe house opens the safe. Is that yeah. what it's called, a safe house? Maybe. Maybe. Double double meaning, and she pulls the real drive out, and she goes, "This is the real drive. He is a right because she like, was the one who initially stole it from the girls. Yeah, way back in Morocco. Okay, way got back. it. And then Sebastian Stan gets into trouble because he delivers the fake drive to his boss, and for the, too and much the, money. And the guy's like, "Listen, I will kill you because you've messed up." And yeah. the guy and Sebastian Stan's like, "Okay, better offer. I'm going to go and just get the drive and bring it to you. I'm just going to okay, get so it for the, free now." Yeah, so okay so so literally though that's why i couldn't remember go what what happened in this scene okay so right so he goes and so infiltrates the safe house dan and his minions right we got a we got a gun on every girl and then he shows them that he has guns on their significant others this was hard and, this was hard to watch and I guess so. He he basically says, "Listen, I'm going to start killing all your family members if you don't tell me where the drive is." And then and then in a moment's notice, mm. um, what's this her is name? Why spies can't fall in love. Like you cannot have people close to you. Right. So he kills 
uh, Lupita, Lupita Nyong'o's boyfriend. Significant other. So sad. I was shocked. So sad. I woke Not up to okay. that this morning. 6 a.m. 6.05. He kills, he's dead. <laughs> he kills um, Diane Kruger's boss, which I guess is sad. But Jonas. I, I, compared to like your boyfriend or your father, you know. Well, that was her father figure because she, her dad double crossed her and like broke her heart and she had to turn him. Oh, true. So, you know, they're going for emotional weight, which I appreciate. Right. You know? And luckily But they... I did feel the saddest for Lupita for being, if we're oh ranking. God, terrible. It. And then what's her name says they, um, she gives it up and she's One goes of the with guys, them. gun what? on the women goes, or no, Sebastian Stan <laughs> might say it. He goes, she doesn't have anyone. Mace. Oh. About about chastity. <laughs> That's true. That was really funny. Actually. Lupita's significant other dead. Diane Kruger's dead. They've got guns on Penelope Cruz's family. Her not kids. Okay. Not I, at this okay. point, I was like, I was like, I don't like this. Like, this isn't fun. This at isn't all. funny anymore. Again, like they do a scene like this in Spy where they kidnap Melissa McCarthy, but it's funny. funny. You don't think funny. she's actually gonna get killed? <laughs> like it's. Funny. This was not fun. I didn't like watching this at all. This really set uh, the tone for my morning, and I just feel not okay. Which is strange because right. what they end up doing is um, the... So they save her family. They save her family because she, she decides to go with her with the drive. Yeah, so Lynn me is like, here's the drive. It's over there. Yeah. Sebastian Stan, Batty McBatterson grabs it. Um, and the women are kind of in the room looking at surveillance footage of their dead significant others and yeah, Lynn me gets um accompanied out with yeah. batty and that's the point where chastain is like get those off the screen get yeah get the dead bodies off camera and diane kruger yeah. goes i didn't even touch it and the camera switches to Lynn me's glasses cool yeah so finally but, like a fun spy gadget the first gadget. one we've seen but what did we both think in that moment as we were watching it we just talked about. We just this. talked about it. I thought that that meant the deaths were fake; that they were green screen. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> I was like, "What did we think?" I guess this whole time I'm not really willing to buy how serious this movie is. Oh, <laughs> I 100% agree. For the jokes. And by the way, once we resolve the whole movie, I was expecting them to go home and see their significant others. Like, I really. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was she... expecting it. Just kidding. I was expecting Nick to go. Just kidding. Those were staged green screen CGI, whatever. Yeah. It was really funny though. Not, once they realize once they realize movie. her glasses have cameras in them. I forget which of the girl sorry, which of the women says this. Women. But yeah. But, but she says and this is not the exact quote, but it's close enough. She goes, She wants us to know where she's going. I was like, obviously. <laughs> Do <laughs> like Yes, and she wants you to know where she's going. Obviously, like, it's, it's Lindy's glasses, and then they cut to Lindy's glasses. She wants to know where she's going, and I went, oh, "Smart." So they they know where she's going, and then they they um. I gotta hand it. Okay, this is an aside. I gotta hand oh, it. Oh, then to they the find the Annie Oakley room. Oh, what? I gotta hand it to the Spy Kids because I feel like they would have done the same in this moment. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Anyone would have done that. It's a real so top if, of intelligence, top of our intelligence movie. So they're like, okay, we know where she's going. I guess she's going to some hotel or whatever. Mm-hmm. And before they leave, Jessica Chastain stumbles into the Annie Oakley all girls gun club in the back. And they're like, found it. Now we're in business. And I was now like, we're in the money. How are they going to take all those where they need them? Duffel bags. <laughs> there was a lot. Yeah, a lot of guns. I, you, never, you never think of those logistics. I'm like, okay, never. you want multiple machine guns on your person. What am I going to do? And Chastain is strapping up, like seat yeah. belting and strapping, but also duffel bags for the yeah. ammo. Okay, yeah. So they're getting ready, and then we cut to a scene where um, she is in the room at the hotel, and... She is trying to use the thing and she's trying to get it ready. And she looks like she's genuinely working. And Sebastian Sands like, you're going to have to work faster. faster. You're going to have to work harder. Yeah, Lynn Mee is like saying something like it's transcoding or I. she's sensing tech language that we just don't understand. Yeah. But she's buying time. She's buying time. Important. And then eventually they get fed up with her or she unlocks it, unclear. And they put her in a different room. Yeah. And then... And this Lupita's was, this was hacking my favorite in scene. the whole time. And yeah. Lupita's saying things like, we've only got one minute max. And Chastain's like, well, fuck it. I got to go. And she starts scaling the side of a building. 
Oh my god. You remember Wait, that? this was my favorite scene in the movie because okay, yeah, let's hear it. Well, it to me it was what I wanted from the movie the whole time, which is when Lemmy is in a room by herself with guards mm-hmm. and then she has no gun and she just grabs the lamp and like smashes the lamp on the side and beats these people up with yeah. a lamp stick. Yeah. It was exactly what I wanted in this movie. That's what and I that's when I wrote down I'm obsessed that this movie doesn't want to end. I was like, it doesn't want to end. She's it really does not on. want to end. Like this movie is going to go on forever. Like they are going to drag this out forever. Yeah. When the credits hit, I, I almost didn't believe it was over. And I didn't scrolled, believe it. I scrolled to make sure there wasn't more. Yeah. I was like, I feel like the movie was 355 minutes. It was like, it. so she's like beating them up with a lampshade or lampstick, which was so nice to see. And, Jessica Justine, like you said, is like Scaling coming building, in from the outside. Dislocating her shoulders looked very hard. I, I like, would have been with Penelope Cruz in the elevator. Oh, ow. oh my God. When Penelope just gets in the cru- in Get- the elevator with two civilians. Yeah. She looks <laughs> great. So good. Under the flash, fr- fluorescent lighting too. I was like, wow. I wouldn't look that good. I did write again in my notes because I knew that we were getting to the end. I wrote again, what exactly is the 355? What's because the I was like, we are getting dangerously close to the end of this movie and we still don't know. Yeah. I, but, I, I just was resigned to the fact that I missed it. I said, you missed it, Shane, and you're not going back. Yeah. And this this began which uh, simultaneously thrilling but also boring 10-minute gun sequence where – I knew who the good guys were because they were the the women. I knew who the bad guys were because they were the men. Mm -hmm. Same. Bad guys. It was just like scene to scene to scene of them shooting other people, dodging bullets. Jessica Chastain was like on the balcony of no help. And it was a very long scene. And I knew it was the climax of the movie. It just just felt like the scene where, where she was beating him up with, a lampshade felt much more thrilling to me mm-hmm. than this huge gun battle. Once you pull the guns out, I, I'm like ready to fast forward because no one stands it's, a chance. It's like we said, it's like it's like what happened in the office. It's like when Michael pulls his gun out at the improv class. The improv class. It's just like there's nowhere to go. What is the most exciting thing <laughs> that can happen on stage anytime, anyplace, anywhere? Someone brings a gun on stage. <laughs> And then it like whip pan and cuts too. And he's like, bang, bang, bang. And everyone's dead. Like, it's very true though. Cause it's like, once the guns are out, there's no stakes anymore no because stakes. everybody has guns. Bloodbath. And it's eventually what happens is Diane Kruger gets the, her hands on the drive after a bunch, a big melee and Sebastian Stan gives a little pop, pop from his gun, hits her. She falls in the shoulder. And he which walks. I appreciated. I was like, okay, that's a flesh wound. We're okay. Yeah. He walks over to them, I guess, in some sort of power position where he's going to oh, finally. Lupita, Lupita find, gets the drive and destroys it and does what we wanted the whole time. Okay. Yeah. She just beats the shit did? out of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On the floor. Um, And Sebastian Stan is like standing over Chastain and Penelope Cruz comes in and saves the day. She shoots him. Pops him. And they're like, wow, really good shot. Great really good shot. shot, Penelope Cruz. Good shooting. I thought you were going home. But and... the confusing part is when everyone comes in the room and starts holding up the women who, in my mind, good guy. And I'm going, are they in trouble? They're in trouble. Is this like a Mission Impossible where like pending an investigation, they may or may not be in trouble? I don't know. They're in trouble. Because they could be in trouble. No, they are definitely in trouble at the oh, end of the movie. Oh, you think that they're definitely in trouble? Yeah, they, they get arrested. But then it's like fast forward. Yeah, they escaped. Two months later. Yeah, they got out. Wait, they escaped from jail? Yeah, I think that's what happened. <laughs> I'm no, pretty no, no, sure no. that's what happened at the end. I thought that they were they got plucked and put in hiding. No, I think they get arrested because... But the cause... cops do escort them out. Yeah, because Sebastian Stan, in this moment, is a CIA agent, and they killed him. Yeah. So I, what I think is what what's supposed to happen is that they're supposed to get arrested, go to some sort of prison. And I thought what mm-hmm. Jessica Chastain tells Sebastian Stan in the next scene is that they got out because um, what happens is they go away. Sebastian Stan goes home as a hero, and he gets promoted, mm-hmm. as men do. As men and do. And... 
Wage gap. And then it's because men goes, ask, ladies. You gotta <laughs> ask. You gotta ask. And, and then he goes home one day, and Jessica Chastain's there, looking great, and they are gonna have a drink in the afternoon. Yeah. So she shows up at his place, unannounced, unannounced, lets herself in, which I love. Yeah. So slinky, so cool. They make drinks, and then they sit down. You know, I never take him. mine with ice. Yeah. She gets one straight and up. He gets a little scotch with ice. And then she tells him a little story mm-hmm. about... I'll, I'll let you tell it because it's Women's History Month. <laughs> is it? it is. It's March. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Okay, let's see the runtime. So one minute, one hour 50. That's insane. Or even later because I'm not even... I'm, I, scro- I didn't even scroll to it yet. She tells a little story about the 355. Which is? And... Okay, I had it up before. I want to get. I want to get this right. Okay, the three five five. The title is derived from Agent three five five, the code name of a female spy, female spy mm-hmm. for the Patriots during the American Revolution. That's right. What? Remember what she says. They could have known her name. They just didn't want to. They didn't want to. <laughs> And, like, yeah, a real message of, like, the real good guys will never get their due because no one knows that the women saved the day. Right. And then I think what she's extending this to say is that it was the whole spy agency's fault. Like, they were the ones who didn't want to know her name. And I think I think they're trying to make a broader argument that it's these big institutions that yeah. we need to worry about. Burying women. So... I um, she, yeah. Sorry. She tells us. There's another fact right after the uh-huh. 355 fact, and it says Chastain proposed the idea for this film while working with the director on Dark Phoenix. And Which I just is have truly to like laugh. one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I have to die laughing, like falling off my chair laughing, because pitching a movie based on the code name of a female spy for the Patriots during the American Revolution yeah. sounds cool. But why not just do that story? Do that story. Why yeah, are we I... doing this weird deriv- derivation of that? Ooh, or if big you can even call it. Big Scrabble word. De- did I, is derivation a word? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. So, yeah, I agree with you. Because then my next note after Washington's Female Spy is 355 with an exclamation point. Yeah. I then wrote, I get it now, I think. I think. Because I get it in the sense that, okay, spies have been around and there have been female spies before Mm -hmm. but i think to your point what about that story is analogous to what we just watched i'm not sure there's a whole lot there because they're asking you to make the stretch there my hamstrings i get it i just i just feel like there must be another i feel like there must be a better stretch so she tells him that story. We're all we're all taken aback. We're all trying to process this breaking news, and it's really breaking news. All of a sudden, everyone. the all of a sudden the other girls flood the hallways, and it's goosebump inducing. I was like, <gasps> either and then, side, either doorways, we get one, two, girls, three. girls. I mean, women, 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 women and then. Women. And then they tell him that he's been poisoned, and he's like, "What's in this?" And they're like, "It's a Chinese." herb and he's like it was the ice wasn't it and they're like you are gonna be taken you're gonna wish you were dead because we're gonna yeah. take you to a prison where you will rot so there bad. for the so rest bad. of your life and you're like and, yes and then they walk out of the house <laughs> that's it they walk out of the house and then this was truly my favorite part of the movie it because i felt I felt real life Penelope Cruz's energy in this movement moment because she literally she doesn't say this but she says it. She goes, "All right, can I go?" <laughs> she literally uh, she's like, "Can I go? Are we done? Like, are we done? Done? Done?" It's me at the I'm, end of my shift at like any job ever. It's like, "Can I go?" You literally, don't need me. I, the last thing she says to them, she goes, "Good luck," and she walks away. I gotta go. <laughs> Oh, uh, this these goodbyes made me really sad because it felt like they should all go hide together somewhere in like a fun mansion. I yeah, just felt like, sad. I was like, you guys have been through some shit now. Can we can we get like Big Brother house with well, you? Yeah, it's almost like you wanted one of their phones to ring and then they all look at it and Jessica Chastain picks it up and she goes, 
the three five five and then the thing cuts yeah and it's like, like a charlie's angels ending would yeah have been cool. something fun like that because you're right like penelope cruz leaves and when penelope cruz leaves that made sense not, you're like okay she's a family oh absolutely yeah but it was also like she will never see these women again no never. and then when lupita leaves it's kind of like okay she went through a horribly traumatic event i mm-hmm. think she needs a break and then it's just jessica chastain and, and diane kruger. kruger and she's like um do you want to get a drink Jessica seems like do you want to get a drink and the other girl's like no, no. <laughs> i wish i had those kind of boundaries even if i didn't i thought drink. wonderful boundaries Great i would have been like you know what this woman's been pretty annoying and <laughs> i'm ready for she a break she thinks we're the same we're fucking not she's <laughs> yeah, american she, does. she thinks we're the same she thinks we're the same i would just was shocked by the boundary of it all i would have been like okay i'll go for a drink but i didn't um, want one. sure fine and then I we'll did write down the last this. two lines in the movie because it did make me laugh. They were good. Just the to... last two lines were a very Charlie's Angels good. Okay, so Jessica Ch- Chastain goes, hey, Marie, bye. And then Diane Kruger, playing the part of Marie, goes, I doubt, doubt it. Doubt it. <gasps> so good. So good. Best so then I did, in the whole movie. Then, okay, then at least we know that the girls are, at least those two are going to get back together, and yeah. then the movie ends. I know it wasn't this kind of movie, but I wanted like a date between the two of them not that kind of movie but like well, i did want to see the drink unfortunately what never really happened in the movie was that there was no bonding between the the women beyond the mission yeah i wanted to see them i wanted to know that they were going to go be friends forever after this which is a me problem it's not that kind of well, movie okay it, like it would have really been not. a great it would have been a great time for a callback for Diane Kruger to be like, yeah, but you're buying. Remember, you promised. Like something from Morocco where Jessica Chastain said, she goes, because Jessica Chastain said in Morocco, I'll buy the next round or I guess all the rounds. <laughs> and I would have been like, you owe me. That was insane. You're buying me a drink for the rest of my life. Yeah. I just, I am I guess we were spot on two seconds ago when we were like, she thinks we're the same. We're not the same. Yeah. That, those were the vibes Kruger was giving, and I was down. Or and then make it funny if she was like, if Jessica Chastain, if if Jessica Chastain's character, it would have been better if she was like a nerdy fan of these girls. Like, oh my god, I've heard about you. Ah, you want to be on my team? And at the very end, she's like, oh my god, Diane Kruger, let's go get drinks. And she just looks at her and she just goes, no, <laughs> and walks away. It would have been a lot better. That's very Melissa <gasps> McCarthy spy. No. Yeah. No. You fucking weirdo. <laughs> I don't like. Anyway. You. I think that, like you said, you were right from the top where it was. The, the problem with the movie is that they, they, they went for serious and at the expense of everything else. <laughs> and it's like, I don't necessarily have a problem with serious. No. It, it had well, good intentions. It's just, I think when you and I want to watch, we want to have so much fun. Well, here's the thing. Like we just watched, I just watched the, like two weeks ago that the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die, Mm -hmm. which was very serious all the way through. But it felt different in the sense that, like there felt like there was something at stake and it was enjoyable and it was very stylish and the music was wonderful. Mm -hmm. With this, you you didn't really have some of those same elements that were driving the narrative forward. So I guess I I gotta watch Bond. Yeah, I think it would have been... I just think that if they would have balanced it with a with some humor or just gone full humor, it would have been best. Because if their mission was to make a female led action movie that was successful, I just think it would have been better that way. Yeah, I'm I'm having second thoughts about uh, me critiquing the title and it coming up so late in this film. Okay. Yeah. The 355 was a secret code name. Like, we, oh it was a secret. So, like, even in this woman's lifetime during the revolution, no one knew who she was. So, it's like this okay. whole movie. Okay. I will give you that. I will give you that. It's a secret. It's a secret who these women are. I will give you that. I will give you that. <laughs> they kept it a secret until minute one hour 55. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So, I'm going, I'm changing my mind in real time. Okay. It's important that you listen. Change out of mind. all the, out of everything that I would want to fix with the movie, the title is last time I would list. sacrifice the title for <laughs> for other for other elements. But I'm going to Rotten Tomatoes because I'm just like that discrepancy is killing me. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Between critics and the audience. I, I mean, mean, we're wrapping up. But. Yeah. I would say this, is that if it wasn't the worst movie I've ever seen in my life, but I think that I had really high expectations for the movie, mm-hmm. and I was just hoping it would have been a little bit funnier. If anything, the movie told us that even women can make okay movies. Even right? women can make even okay women. movies. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, that's good because... I feel like every time there's a female-led movie, they're always like, well, is it going to succeed or not? It has to it has to surpass expectations or else it's a failure. I'm like, you know what? Everybody can make okay movies. And that yeah. is progress. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's a refreshing and really positive message because, um, you know, a lot of female-led movies have the bur- bear the burden of, like, having to be amazing because they're speaking for an entire gender. Exactly. And it's like male-led movies don't have that. They're allowed to hit, they're allowed to miss, and they're allowed to suck. So this movie can be medium, and that's fine. I like it for it. Anyway, so if you like medium movies, this is for you. Yeah, I and... think the expectations were low for me to the point where I'm like, okay, yeah, this is a medium spy movie, and I don't really like spy movies. So, yeah, done. Well... And the critics agree. Dod- dodgedly mediocre actioneer. The cinematic equivalent of gathering together Formula One's finest drivers and tossing them the keys to a Yugo. <laughs> I don't even know what a Yugo is. Don't know. But thank you to the women. I think you guys did your best. And No, thank you to the women. And it was glorious seeing you all on screen together. And that alone was enough for me. Yeah. I'll be thinking about this if you win an Oscar for Tammy Faye. Yeah, because you're going to transpose it for us because we're asking Or you if to. Penelope wins for Parallel Mothers, I'll be thinking about this performance instead. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to watch P- Penelope. Yeah. It was, I'll end on, it was lovely to see Penelope and lovely to see Diane Kruger. I forgot that I love them. There you go. And um, a wonderful debut for me for Fan Bing Bing, who plays Lin Mi. I did not know her before this. Yeah, agreed. And they really, they really covered all the, the nationalities, didn't they? Yep. But, you know, okay, we really did the damn thing. We got to get Steven out of here, friends at home, because he's going to fucking Italy. What a bitch. I'm going on my own 355 mission. You gotta really go. You are. Like, let me know how the gotta plane go. ride is, because I wouldn't know how they got anywhere. <laughs> wouldn't know. <laughs> we'll Alrighty. talk about Italy next week, okay? Next week. Okay. All right. Okay, gotta go, girls. Gotta go, girls. <laughs> Bye, Steven. Bye, everyone. <laughs>